In the Garfield area on Black Street, a local businessman bought an old two-story house at number 5445. He planned to renovate it and sell it. A few weeks after the purchase, a team of builders set to work. No one could have thought that they would discover a terrible find and would reveal a creepy secret. On February 28, the builders were working in the backyard of the house 5445. They were to carry out the reconstruction of the terrace. After removing the wooden flooring, concrete slab, bricks and trash, the workers saw a bone sticking out of the ground. They kept on digging, and found more bones and a human skull. The builders reported the terrible find to the new owner of the house, who immediately called the police. Work has stopped. The police fenced off the territory with a yellow tape and the specialists began to explore the territory. It turned out that the body of a woman aged 30 to 35 was once buried in the backyard of the house. The police had to find out who it belonged to and how it got there. An investigation has begun. The calm of the inhabitants of the Garfield area was shaken. This was not the first terrible discovery. Two years ago, there was a double murder in the next street. The Wolf sisters, Sarah and Susan, were shot dead. The bodies were found in the basement of the house where the women lived. The killer was their neighbor. Despite the fact that at the time of the discovery of the skeleton in the backyard of the house 5445, the killer of the sisters was already serving a sentence in prison, the residents of the city began to worry. What if the wrong person was detained two years ago and the killer is still at large? The police were quick to assure people that the two crimes were unrelated. After the examination, it became clear that the discovered remains had lain in the ground for many years. There was no soft tissue left on the bones, however, they were intact, without any damage. Therese Rocco, who in the past led the department for searching for missing people, was connected to the investigation. She once lived next door to the house where the skeleton was discovered but Therese was now retired and living in Brooklyn. She kept copies of old unsolved cases that had long been forgotten. Going through the notes, Therese stumbled upon the case of 30-year-old Marcella Kralls. The girl went missing on November 19, 1959. That day, she was last seen at a local restaurant. Marcella had lunch, left the establishment and disappeared without a trace. There was no evidence or clues. The girl was never found. Investigators allowed the version that Marcella disappeared of her own free will. She could leave the city without warning anyone. But as it turned out later, the girl had first type diabetes. She had to inject herself with insulin every day. But when they searched Marcella's apartment, investigators found an untouched supply of drugs. If the girl decided to leave, she would definitely take vital drugs with her. Investigators used her dental records to find out if the remains found could be those of Marcella Kralls. The examination showed that the skeleton belongs to another person. Then another case was raised from the archive. In 1962, a girl named Marion went missing. By a strange coincidence, she lived in the same apartment as Marcella Kralls, and also disappeared without a trace, leaving no evidence or clues. An examination using Mary Ann's dental records showed that the remains didn't belong to her. When the investigation reached a dead end, Therese Rocco remembered the old story. The house 5445 at Black Street was once owned by a married couple, Albert and Mary R. Curry. They lived there with their two children, Michael and Donna. Therese was very close to the R. Curry family and even became godmother to their daughter Donna with whom she still keeps in touch. Later, Therese said that as soon as information about the found female skeleton appeared, she immediately remembered the disappearance of her friend, but did not tell the police anything. She tried to push the terrible thoughts away. All the neighbors spoke positively about the R. Curry family. Albert worked as a builder, and Mary took care of the house and raising children. People around have never seen or heard scandals. The R. Curry seemed like a model family. But in the fall of 1964, a strange event occurred that shocked everyone. 
Albert told relatives and friends that his 36-year-old wife Mary packed up and went to her lover, leaving him alone with the children. She wanted cardinal changes in her life and asked not to disturb her. Where and to whom she went is not known. The woman left no address or phone number. Albert added that he had long known about his wife's infidelities, but put up with them, because he wanted to save his family. No one could believe that Mary was capable of such an act. She was a good mother and would definitely not leave children. Besides, the escape was very suspicious. No one saw how and when the woman left. At the time of this incident, the children were visiting relatives in Dormont. And when they returned, the father said that their mother left them and ran away with another man. Months passed, and Mary still did not get in touch. Despite the fact that Albert's words sounded convincing, rumors spread that he was involved in the disappearance of his wife, but no one expressed their guesses to him or the police. There were no official calls to the police with a statement about the disappearance of Mary. But the great-nephew of the missing person, Charles Saberna, claims that his mother, Sister Mary, and another relative contacted the police with a request to search for the woman. But after talking with Albert, law enforcement agencies refused to accept the application. They thought it was a family affair with no crime. The woman voluntarily left her husband and children. A few days after Mary's disappearance, Albert poured cement over a piece of land in the backyard and began to build a terrace. It looked suspicious. But the neighbors thought that the man was trying to cope with stress by immersing himself in work. Eight months after the disappearance of Mary, namely on May 8, 1965, there was a car accident in which 40-year-old Albert died. His car crashed into the brick wall of a Chevrolet dealership on Baum Boulevard at high speed. After a series of examinations, it turned out that the man was sober, and the car was in good condition. The picture looked more like a suicide than an accident. Our Curry's children, 15-year-old Michael and 16-year-old Donna, were taken in by relatives, and the house was soon sold. To find out if the found remains could belong to the missing Mary, it was necessary to contact with close relatives. Therese helped find our Curry's daughter, Donna, to provide DNA material. So on February 21, 2019, thanks to a DNA examination, the investigation established that the found skeleton really belongs to Mary R. Curry. Finally, after 55 years, everyone got the truth. Unfortunately, the circumstances under which Mary died still remain a mystery. All evidence points to Albert being involved in his wife's death. But whether this was done intentionally or maybe it was an accident, we will never know. Therese Rocco to this day cannot believe that Albert could harm his wife. She remembers him as a very kind, bright person. He was friendly and sociable. Shortly before the tragedy, she found out that not all was well in the R. Curry family. There were sometimes quarrels between the spouses, but this happens in many other families, so Therese didn't attach any importance to this. When you don't know where a person is for a number of years and you don't hear and there's no, no indication that there's a communication of any sort, you generally have to think the worst. Never, never in my own thoughts believed that this woman had left, and I could never, never believe that this man had any, any involvement in her disappearance. But Mary's great-nephew, Charles Saberna, spoke a little differently about Albert. He and his family lived for some time near the house of a great aunt, and was a frequent visitor in her house. At that time he was five years old. The man remembers that Albert was mean, especially towards children. He often had outbursts of anger. Charles' vivid recollection was that due to children's disobedience, Albert threw their toys over the fence. Charles suggested that a quarrel could have occurred between the spouses, and maybe even a fight, during which Mary was injured, resulting in death. Albert could also strangle or poison his wife. Forensic experts who examined the skeleton found no damage that could indicate a violent death. Therefore, it still remains a mystery what happened in the house 5445 more than half a century ago. If Albert were not guilty, it is unlikely that he would have begun to bury his wife's body in the backyard of the house. And most likely, 
he committed suicide due to the fact that the dark secret became too heavy a burden for him. Six months later, the new owner of the house with a terrible history on Black Street completed the renovation and put it up for sale. A few weeks later it was bought for $400,000. It is not known if the new owners know the history of this house.